A mere 53 points separated the top two title contenders heading into the penultimate race of the 2010 V8 Supercars Series. And with so much at stake, the big guns were hoping this would be the only bingle they'd encounter at Sydney's Olympic Park. And away they will go for the Sydney Telstra 500. Leader James Courtney was feeling the heat and it was coming from Jamie Winkup, who started three places higher than him in third. Tony D'Alberto encountered trouble at the very first turn. But somebody's into the wall, it had to happen. While Wing Cup was as aggressive as you'd expect him to be. Oh, look at this Wing Cup. Oh, got it done. Five. Great got it time. He did it last year. Same spot. That is a very, very good pass. Just when this affair was heating up, Carl Reinler brought it to a screeching halt. Oh, it's hit the fence too. So the front left was already gone. And he's now about three feet higher than he should be. The safety car forced everyone to settle down, but only momentarily. And even teammates got tangled up in pit lane. Oh. As he eyed off his hat trick of drivers' championships, Win Cup Spectre loomed large, and he clearly wasn't going to settle for second in this year's series. But Holdsworth has the right line for the next turn, so. So he had the right idea. Because Lee covered going into eight, it made him slow. Look at this, he's up the inside again. This time he'll make it stick. Well, Jamie Winkup hits the lead of the motor race. Courtney, meanwhile, was caught up in traffic a little further back. It wasn't quite peak hour on Sydney's roads, but it was frustrating enough for the championship front runner. Oh, Courtney gets two spots out of it, but he actually climbs up over the Caruso car. At least he wasn't in as much bother as Tim Slade. Tim Slade pulls off to the left-hand side and slides. Oh. Or Warren Luff, who lost his door and triggered another appearance from the safety car. Door missing off the Tony Delberto car, tangling up with Warren Luff there, that was messy. Wincup took the chance to refuel and Courtney took advantage to head the field for the first time as Michael Caruso's mistiming opened things up for him. Courtney is doing to Caruso what Wincup did to Holdsworth and Caruso's lost it. Courtney gets the race lead. Andrew Thompson was the next man to go for an unexpected spin. He's getting service. Oh. Oh. There you go. Speaking of getting service. While Courtney grabbed his chance to freshen up, Russell Ingall assumed the lead. But it was shaky to say the least. 9.54 oh. and there's a mistake for Ingall. It was only a matter of time before Wincup was back at the head of the pack. But a few minutes later, Dean Fiore found concrete and another pause of proceedings became necessary. Oh, Dean Fiore. Can he get it out of there is the question. The race was about to undergo an intriguing change in complexion as the weather took a turn for the worst. The tension rose sharply as the rain began to fall and the battle between the big two went to a whole new level. Who wants it most? Courtney's doing an amazing job to hold off the pressure. No sooner had Wincup stuck his beak back in front when he went down the wrong avenue. Oh, oh no! He's gone! Wincup's gone down the road at turn nine! Courtney was the first to change tyres, but somewhat curiously, they stuck with slicks, and the lack of traction was soon apparent. Look, look. That's two corners in a row. Wincup went for an each-way bet by only adopting new slicks at the rear. And after Russell Ingall became the next casualty on an afternoon of increasing carnage, everyone was wishing they were on rubber that was better suited to what was fast becoming the proverbial ice rink. Then in one of the season's most dramatic moments, the top three championship contenders all came a cropper. Oh no! He's in the fence! The man's in the fence! They're all in the fence! Oh! Unbelievable! Top three in the fence! Fifth Van Wiesberg and goes as well. Suddenly, Wing Cup has managed to keep going. Courtney's desperately trying to go with it. The fence! The trio limped back to base and their crews went into a frenzy. Oh, it's got a broken disc. Okay. It's got a broken oh, rotor. He's going to be no, there forever. Right Wincup's tradesmen knew that the cause was lost, and Winterbottom's workshop was equally grim. Gordon, now out at the moment. We're going to try to do something with this. See what we can do. Stay in the car. Somehow, though, Courtney came back, looking like a bandaged bear, with the sole aim of souveniring as many points as possible. 
He's just got to be able to get around. And Adrian Burgess just said, be careful, James, be careful. The race was still to be won, and Jonathan Webb did his best impersonation of speed skater Stephen Bradbury, with the Dick Johnson Racing rookie becoming motorsport's accidental hero. The rain is falling down at the Sydney Telstra 500, and that is a victory that's fallen from the heavens hey, well done, well for Jonathan done. Webb. Jason Bright bagged second spot, and Rick Kelly completed the trifecta. But the biggest story to emerge from the wreck of race 25 is that Win Cup was classified as failing to finish, allowing Courtney to stretch his series advantage to 113 points. The Sydney sider now only needs to finish 22nd in tomorrow's season finale to claim his first title. David Rollins, Big Pond Sport.